Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'd like to talk about adaptive octane logic. What is this streamer? Oh, that's the glare off of that car. Okay, so what I'd like to talk about today is adaptive octane logic. What is adaptive octane logic, Alex? This hat is sweaty as shit. Oh my God, forget that. So adaptive octane logic is a fancy way of saying that the car adjusts for the sweetness of the fuel. If you're running 91 octane, if you're stupid enough to run 89 or 87 octane in this car, you will not see as much timing. If anything, the car's knock sensors will remove timing if they are detecting any kind of detonation or anything similar to any rattling going on in the combustion chamber. So when you add octane booster to a stock vehicle or run really good octane fuel, the car can adjust timing on its own with the same calibration based on the quality of the fuel. Now Lund Racing piggybacks off of that logic, okay, and we basically install it into our NA applications and our boosted applications. I am in my 2019 Vortex Supercharged Mustang. Current mods are Ultimate Header Long Tube Headers, Free Flow and Exhaust, a Vortex V3 with a 3.6 pulley, LU47 injectors, and a booster pump. And that's pretty much it. The car has made over 720 rear wheel horsepower on pump gas. Yes, good, sweet pump gas. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to a road and do a third gear wide open throttle pull. And I'm just gonna video the spark PID on the end gauge to show you exactly how much spark it's seeing up to 7,500 RPM. On regular pump gas, this car should not see more than 13, 14, maybe 15 degrees of timing. But then I'm gonna go to like an advanced auto parts. I'm gonna buy Octanium off the shelf Octane Booster, which is I believe $20 for a, uh, a quart. I'm gonna fill up and make sure that there's plenty of Octane Booster, plenty of Octane, and make sure that the car basically has over 98 Octane or maybe about 100 Octane, because I believe one bottle of the Octanium Octane Booster um, treats up to a tank and this tank is about 15 gallons or so when it is bone dry You can fill it up to about 15 gallons. So not much talking. Let's just get right to Mexico Do a wide open throttle pull once the car is warmed up and it has 93 Shell gasoline in the tank right now from a very known station that has good fuel We'll see how much spark we see on the data log and on the same calibration. I'll fill up with other fuel put Octane Booster in the tank and see if we get more timing on the same strip of road under the same conditions. Let's go. Hoping that I can get this in the shot, but it's gonna be a little difficult because of the glare, but I'll do my best, okay? So I'm gonna go wide open throttle. It is third gear. It's third gear right there. Inlet air temperature is 97. Right there, 97, sorry. And I'm gonna do my best to see how much spark we get when we get up to about 7,500 RPMs, meaning wide open throttle, max effort. See what the cap is. I think it'll see maybe 13 or 14 degrees, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I keep this thing straight. So about 13 degrees at wide open throttle, meaning at over 7,000 RPMs, as you saw. So what I'm gonna do is um, probably data log that, I'm make another pull and data log it so that I can actually show you what's happening in the log. The yellow light's blinking. You see where it says S-A-F-T-O-T? -T? That's actually the Ford pit for Spark. So I'm gonna try to do this so you can see Spark with RPM in the same shot. So you'll know that Spark will see about 13 or so at wide open throttle. Um, over 65, this thing is pulling. in and stop that log that log number right here is number 170 that's right so when you're taking a data log guys log number 170 let's remember that so when we review it so what am I gonna do now stop the log go get octane booster somewhere okay everything's running good okay <laughs> 108 IAT pretty awesome that the IAT stay nice and chill on a centrifugal maybe Tony full bolt on has a point because <laughs> it is 93 outside and it's only gone up Ooh, it's actually going down so it's probably gonna see maybe about ambient at most so now let's go to a gas station fill up 
we're gonna put octane booster in the tank see how much I'm gonna take a, a, a video of the gauge like I did the first time to see how much spark we see then another video of a data log so we already did video no octane booster 93 shell pump gas then a data log with a video 93 octane shell pump gas now we're gonna go get uh, you can see all the love bugs are making their way down to uh, South Florida we're gonna go to advanced auto parts get an off-the-shelf octanium uh, can fill up at any gas station racetrack whatever uh, usually the uh, shell is the best in this area so we're gonna just go to a racetrack which is right next door to advanced auto parts fill up with 93 octane boost boostainer octanium whatever they have on the shelf let it mix a little bit go for a drive then do the same thing video the gauge third gear watt then video the data log third gear watt then I'll go home review both data logs and we'll see what we find okay so real quick something happened that I thought was pretty pretty uh, funny so advanced auto parts did not have octanium or boostane I went in there no problem when I went into AutoZone right in the front it said you cannot enter the store unless you have a mask on so I had two options Complain like a pussy on Facebook and tell people, oh, I'm not supporting AutoZone because they're telling me to wear a fucking mask. Or you shut your whore mouth, get a fucking mask, and get in there and go about your business. That's what I decided to do. So I'll be back there and I go, I'm going to go get my Octanium and not complain like a pussy on Facebook telling them that they're trampling on my rights. I got a mask. If anything, AutoZone is full of vatos and they're probably sick as shit and got every disease on the planet. So this is a good thing for me. And just like that, after taxes, $24.60 for this guy, Octanium. So for those of you that have heard about it or, you know, have heard about me, reference it on my live streams or Lund Racing talk about it, uh, easily available anywhere. This is the Auto Zone over in Lake Park in Florida. Long trip from Mexico, but I made it here. And it adds supposedly eight, eight points, increases Octane up to eight numbers. 80 points whatever the fuck that means so if i put 93 octane does that mean it's going to be 101 so it supposedly treats how many gallons don't say don't say don't say so let's see oh treats up to 10 gallons very good 10 gallons so that means i'm just i'm just going to go ahead and uh, fill up with the uh with 93 octane from racetrack put this whole can in there drive it around a little bit and see if we can get more than 15 or 16 degrees which is two degrees which is worth about 15 to 20 rear wheel horsepower maybe more on this car just by adding octanium on the same exact tune that has adaptive octane logic okay so racetrack racetrack 93 isn't as good as shell and for those truck drivers that are out there always telling me i deliver to the same gas station it's all the same shit no it's not um, because I get no knock on on every other gas. I'm sorry, I get knock on every other gas except Shell. So if it's all the same shit and the racetrack gas truck delivers to the Shell, <laughs> then something's going on with the additives or something. Because on this guy, I've gotten knock. On Shell, I have not gotten knock. So I'm going to fill up with this guy, which is not bad. 229 a gallon. Then I'll dump this guy in there, the whole thing, because it treats 10 gallons, using the Ford spigot adapter thingy. And then we'll uh, make a test after it's all mixed in there nicely. So this stuff is green apparently. So a lot of you guys that use something like a Torco additive, you might not be surprised if your spark plugs start to discolor a little bit if you use Torco very often. This is the first, actually the second can I've ever used of any additive on this vehicle because it lives on pump gas. But just, just be known, there is some tint to this stuff and Torco especially has had like an orange tint to their additive so I'll monitor my plugs but I don't use it often so all right enough talking let's get it mixed up let's get it on the road and uh, let's see if we can get more timing out of this guy with octanium in the tank here we are again Torco or octanium in the tank third gear advanced track off inlet air temp 99 so let's do the same thing and see how much timing it sees with the same tune with octanium in the tank. Hopefully I keep it straight. Whoa! Three more degrees at wide open throttle with the same exact tune. 
from 13 to 14 to 17 degrees and this thing was all in the mail it was legit all in the mail so I'm gonna try to go exit gauges come on <laughs> diagnostics data logging yep no not eco boost the fuck crazy normal mode okay so we're gonna go ahead and give it a break so I don't do a back-to-back -back, uh, that you know watt pull cuz I don't want to stress the car out but I'm gonna start logging since now and it'll be log 173 I apparently hit the button a bunch of times so the first log was log 170 this one will be lo log number 173 and I'm gonna you know cool it down a little bit even though it's not hot it only went up two degrees during that watt pull but I'll make sure I get a shot that's wide angle like this so we can see saf tot where are you, Sav Tot? Where's the Sav Tot? There you go, Sav Tot. Sav Tot. Right there. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, baby. I gotta get professional equipment eventually. This is ridiculous. There you go, Sav Tot and RPM in the same shot. I'll do this guy, maybe. Yeah. And even though there's glare, I'll do my best. But then I'll save the data log, review the data log with you guys together back at home, and we'll see how it all shook out again adaptive octane logic is the subject matter of this video the car saw three more degrees of timing at wide open throttle with the exact same tune guys that means three degrees with about 11 psi it's probably with 30 to 40 rear wheel horsepower in this car in its current configuration it just had a constant pull let's cool her down do another pull then get home and review the data logs Okay, right there where it says SAFTOT, where it says 40, because we're cruising, that's the number I hope I can get on the same shot that I'm doing the RPM sweep to show that at 7,500 RPM, it's seeing almost 17 degrees of timing. I'll do my best, but obviously I gotta pay attention to the road. That's the main uh, thing I gotta worry about. So this is the best shot I can do for you. And uh, let's go wide open throttle and get home and review the data logs, see how everything looks. I'm gonna stare at it real quick. Oh, that's fourth, let's do third. <laughs> there you go, third. 17 degrees flat. Wow, this thing is cooking. With uh, some octanium in the tank. Guys, this thing is probably close to 730, 740 wheel right now on pump gas with a 3.6 pulley, free flowing exhaust. Um, you know, this thing is just really haul in the mail with a very basic basic setup um, I don't have access to a dyno right now but it'd be interesting to see what it's making but enough of that that's log 173 let's look at log 170 173 review the video and show you how adaptive octane logic works on a Lund racing tune some people can figure it that way some don't we do and this is why because if you ever come across not so great gas somewhere the car simply won't see that great a timing if you do come across really good sweet fuel it'll automatically add the timing via the knock sensors very 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 cool technology let's get home review the logs and end the video okay here we have it so what we're going to do is we're going to have log 170 on the left or log 173 on the right we're going to go ahead and give you a rundown as to what we saw on each and explain what i'm looking at so right here right here and we're going to do timing knock sensor okay beautiful okay so we're going to look at timing real quick so let's look at this log here on the left first this is timing guys timing so wide open throttle up to the rpm so you see these little dips here that's normal for the uh, 18 and up mustang for whatever reason it just has like a dip that doesn't it's not noticeable in the car so look at it when we sweep left to right this guy goes 15 16 13 12 for back to 14 12 then 11 and a half degrees up top so on average i'd say between 13 and 12 degrees in the meat of the power band 5400 to about 7500 okay and the knock sensors were not happy. The knock sensors said, no, thank you. And this is regular 93 pump gas on a 3.6 pulley and a Vortec with the cold air intact. That's why I'm a little leery about going crazy on a 3.6 pulley with an 18 up car. Uh, 15 and up, not that leery because the compression is a little lower. So it's not that noticeable. But on a 12 to 1 compression car, knock sensors hate life on pump gas with a 3.6 pulley, which is about 11, 12 PSI. Then this is the Torco or Octanium. So look at here. Look at how much flatter the torque curve, uh, the uh, the spark curve looks. Flat, 
versus very bumpy, okay? Very stable here. So let's highlight this guy and get bigger. And look at here, 17, 16, 17, 16, 16 flat. This is basically 7,700 RPM. I'm done here, okay? I'm ready to shift. And it saw 7,700 to 7,700, five more degrees. So that's 11.8 versus 7,700, 16.3. <laughs> I mean, it's almost five more degrees, guys. It's a huge difference. And this is the same exact tune, guys. This is with regular pump gas from Shell. This is with the racetrack gas, which isn't that good, with a can of octanium through it, proving how beneficial the uh, octane logic and piggybacking off of that is now, if you're a tuner that you lock the tune at a certain timing, regardless of what the knock sensors do, that's fine. But that means that the guy has to run specific fuel for that timing curve. When you're allowing the knock sensors to add or remove timing accordingly based on the octane, in my opinion, that's better for the customer. So right here, it's in front of you guys. No octane booster, octane booster, super flat curve. And you saw on the video how much more timing we got out of it. I suspect this is at least a 50 horsepower bump in five degrees. Guys, five degrees is huge. So just wanted to showcase what adaptive octane logic looks like, how it works, how it looks like on a data log, why we recommend throwing octane booster to determine whether the knock is false or octane related, and why we love these Mustangs with their super adjustable uh, parameters and we piggyback off of a lot of the factory stuff because it simply works hope you guys enjoyed the video hopefully you now see what we see and when we say put octane booster in it or go get gas at a better gas station this is why thanks for listening guys we'll talk to you later